My name is Theo Bennett and I'm one of the tutors here at MCAT Self Prep and today I'm going to be talking about how to get accepted into medical school with a low MCAT score. Typically in the fall this is when a lot of medical schools are offering interviews for admissions and so a lot of people come to me asking the question of how they can improve their shot um, at getting into school whether they've been offered an interview or not depending on their MCAT score. And really what I'd like to do to start is just reframe this question because I think getting into a medical school with a low MCAT score is the same question as how can I improve my chances of getting accepted to medical school in general. The first way that I'd like to address this question is to really think about how to build a school list where you're competitive. A lot of people focus on the MSAR, which is great. Um, this is a resource that's put out by the AAMC and it gives a really in-depth view into the statistics of each incoming class to every different medical school across the country. And so I used this and researched it uh, in depth when I was building my school list. Now, what a lot of people will do is they'll point to the headline numbers. They'll point to the averages, both the average MCAT and the average grades. Uh, and those average GPAs and average MCAT scores are helpful in terms of thinking about kind of where you stack up um, with that incoming class, but they're not really helpful in terms of where you're competitive. For example, if someone were to only consider the schools in which they are at least at the average or or higher, they're going to be writing out so many different schools where they're still competitive. If you're just focusing on the median MCAT score, then at that given medical school, that means that literally half of the class performed worse on the MCAT. So it would be totally silly to just write that school off if you didn't meet their average or their median, right? They are absolutely going to consider you if you scored lower. And the proof is in the pudding. They've admitted people and they've literally admitted half of their class with coming in with scores that are lower than that. All this being said, instead of looking at the average MCAT score for a given school, what you should be looking more at is, is about at the 25th percentile. They give the 10th, 25th, 50th, 75th, and 90th percentiles. And I think looking at the 25th percentile is kind of the best barometer of where you would be considered. Because if you're looking at the 10th percentile, those are generally going to be students who have really extenuating circumstances. They have overcome incredible adversity. Maybe they have a really compelling life story. And while that may apply to you, you might want to shift your, uh, your sights maybe a little bit um, more towards that 10th percentile. But for most students, I would kind of consider that 25th percentile. That means that they definitely think that you're academically qualified to, to go to school there, um, and, and they'll absolutely consider you. Now, if you're below that 25th percentile, this would be kind of the situation where I'd have to be brutally honest and tell you that it's probably best to reconsider. I would probably either change up your school list or uh, consider retaking the MCAT or maybe doing a post -bac. Uh But again, you want to be applying to a broad variety of schools. So some schools where you're in that 25th percentile range, some schools where you're at the 50th percentile range, and some schools where your score is at the 75th percentile range. Just to give yourself a, a kind of a cast a wide net and so that you have reach schools, you have schools where you um, fit in right with that median, but also, again, plenty of schools where you're in that 25th percentile range because you'll absolutely be considered. Once you've built your school list and once you've decided that a school will consider you, which again, just means that you're above that 25th percentile of both uh, your GPA and your MCAT, this now means that the school is going to shift its focus, right? It's not just going to evaluate the question of, will this student be successful here academically? Because clearly you will be if you're above that threshold. Now, instead, they're going to look at how can we build our class, right? Who do we want to bring in from a wide variety of both life experiences and skills and, and expertise? How can we build the most cohesive and vibrant class? And so schools are going to stop focusing on just the highest stats, right? If every school was just focused on admitting people with the highest scores, the medical school admissions process would look a lot more like law school, right? They, you could just find a matrix of your GPA and your MCAT, and then you would know where to apply. But instead, medical schools are relatively holistic in their admissions process. And so, again, we want to think about how we can improve our chances given the scores that we've had. And so what I tell students over and over and over again is in your application for medical school, you should focus on kind of like finding a lane, right? You should focus instead on what is the aspect that I want to accentuate that I feel like is the, the strongest aspect that I bring and how can I highlight that and bring that out in my application. So this could look like a lot of different things, right? You could have been heavily involved in athletics. You could have been on 
uh, you know, a D1 varsity team at your school. Uh, you could have been heavily involved in service with maybe one organization or a few. Uh, you could have been involved in outreach, in advocacy, in research, right? Figure out what are the one or two or three aspects that you've done the most work, and then try to connect as many different aspects of your application to that central thing. Because when medical school admissions committees are convening, what they're going to do is they're not going to just take the people with the highest stats. What they're going to do is take the best people in each of those categories, right? They're going to say, who are the two athletes that we want to bring into our class? Who are the two social advocates that we want to bring in? Who are the two researchers who are going to end up curing cancer, right? They're not going to just focus on people who have the highest stats. Again, you've proven that. You've shown them that you're going to be academically competent there. Now, instead, what you want to do is think about, okay, who do I want to quote unquote, compete against? And then how can I be as strong as possible in that domain? So for myself, what I did is I really focused on one area and it was mental health advocacy. My dad has bipolar disorder and this is something that I've been very public about. And so I focused on all the different ways in which I tried to promote mental health advocacy. I was involved in mental health clubs on campus. I did research with mental health. I did public speaking with mental health. I even wrote papers and op-eds about mental health. And so when I was trying to focus on my application, I was trying to bring out the mental health aspects of all the other activities that I did. Just for example, right? I was a part of an organization where we promoted hair drives, basically people to donate hair, kind of like locks of love. And then we would donate that hair to help people who are cancer survivors and things like that to help um, create wigs for them. And so what I did for this activity in my application was I focused on the mental health aspect of this kind of organization for hair donations. And so again, I was just trying to tie in all these different activities into this central narrative so that that way when they read my application and when I could walk into interviews, I was the mental health guy, right? And so I kind of sold myself as that. And so therefore I was only competing against the people who were also mental health advocates. I wasn't trying to compete with everyone. Just to summarize, I think that if you want to improve your chances of being accepted to medical school, regardless of the score that you have, but especially if you have a lower score, the, the best way that you can do that is pick one aspect of your application and try and maximize that. If you think about building a video game character, you know, at the beginning of video games, how you can customize their stats and their, their ability to jump and run and strength and things like that. And so instead of using all those points to build out your character in a sort of uniform way, instead what I want you to do is sort of check the box with everything, right? Do a little research, do a little... A uh, bit of community service, kind of make sure that they, they see that you're involved in a lot of different things, but then pick one aspect and try and max that out. So instead of focusing on a weak area of your application, as long as you've checked that box, what you should do instead is use that time to build out that stat, again, that area, that lane that you're focused on, and try and have that be as exceptional as possible. This way, when you approach an admissions committee, you're much more likely to kind of punch above your weight class, so to speak, and be able to be admitted to places that are kind of more like reach schools for you. Because again, they can see this cohesive narrative and then they're gonna not really look at your stats. They're gonna focus instead on, okay, what is exceptional about this person and how does their exceptional trait compare against other people's exceptional trait? Again, this is just my two cents, but I've seen this work time and time again I've advised lots of different students at MCAT Self Prep to both get into medical school and help on, on the MCAT. And I've seen this work. I've seen this work firsthand, both myself and with others. Um, it's enabled them to get accepted into top 10 places with pretty average stats. And so I feel just really strongly that medical schools and especially admissions committees, once they see that you'll be successful academically, all they care about is that, that X factor, right? That, that unique thing that you're gonna bring to their school because now they're going to just be focused on building a cohesive class and building a, a, a great learning environment. Uh, they're not just focused on people with the highest stats. So thanks for listening. I hope that helps. And please reach out to me with any questions. If you have any, um, you can find me on my tutoring page at MCAT Self Prep. And there's plenty of other tutors there. And we're all really willing and, and enabled to, to help you realize your dreams for medical school. So Thanks again, and be sure to like and subscribe if you are interested in more of this content. Uh, we're going to be trying to put out videos more and more frequently. So.